Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, it is Thursday, June 22nd. We just got big news out of the United States Senate. And it's not particularly good news, but it shouldn't come as a shock, especially for those of you who've been geeking out on the channel as we talk about House Joint Resolution number 44. So let's spend a few minutes. Let's get you all up to speed and let's talk about the Senate refuses to stop ATF's pistol brace roll. Okay, so here's what we're talking about. We're talking about House Joint Resolution Number 44, originally sponsored by Representative Andrew Clyde out of the state of Georgia. This is a resolution which, if passed, would have halted ATF's pistol brace rule in its tracks. Now, it kicked around in the House of Representatives for a while. I think there was some gamesmanship going on as to whether or not it got to the floor. They finally got it to the floor well after the rule had already gone into effect. It did narrowly pass out of the House, and we were somewhat hopeful that it would pass out of the Senate before getting to the president's desk where it would be vetoed in a heartbeat. And because we'd done the math and realized there was no way that a veto would be overridden, we had already announced that House Joint Resolution 44, although a wonderful, wonderful piece of legislation, was essentially dead on arrival. As it turns out, President Biden will not have to veto this resolution because it has died in the United States Senate today. It has failed to be passed. It went down by a vote of 51 to 49, essentially along party lines. Now, as we mentioned, there was, in order for this to get passed out of the Senate, we were going to need two crossover votes, okay? And we had identified a couple of Democratic senators in relatively uh, red or purple states that are up for re-election that we thought might have the cojones to actually side with, which would probably be a majority of their constituents. That, of course, was Senator Joe Manchin out of West Virginia, as well as Senator John Tester out of Montana. Now, had either one of them crossed lines, it would have been a 50-50 tie, and that would have put Kamala Harris in as the tie-breaking vote, and we all know how that would have gone. So we needed both of these gentlemen to flip. Neither one of them did. So both Senator Manchin and Senator Tester have voted to allow ATF's pistol race rule to continue in effect. Now, here's what I would say to both of them, is even if you believe that we need regulation, of firearms with attached stabilizing braces, or even if you believe that this has been an end around to federal legislation regulating short barrel rifles, anybody who has a rudimentary understanding of the separation of powers and how our government is meant to be structured and run could have still voted to reject this out of the simple principle that this is Congress's act. If Congress wants to regulate firearms with attached stabilizing braces, then Congress needs to pass laws to that effect. And I really had hoped that one or both of these senators would at least stand up for the rule of law and our constitutional structure to our government, but they chose not to. And candidly, those are questions that they will have to answer to their voters during their re-election campaign. So once again, House Joint Resolution 44 has failed to pass out of the Senate. It is dead. There will be no congressional saving you from the pistol brace rule. That should come as a shock to nobody. How are you gonna be saved? Well, we got this video coming out tomorrow and I want you guys all to pay attention to it because it talks about the huge hearing we got in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals on the matter of Mock v. Garland, and that's going to be on June 29th. And, and we are already making a prediction that we believe that the plaintiffs in Mock v. Garland are going to prevail in front of the Fifth Circuit and that the Fifth Circuit will be striking down ATF's pistol race rule probably on multiple grounds. If there are any other developments between now and June 29th, obviously you will be the first to know. In the meantime, if you got any questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington gun law by now. But if you don't, that's okay, because that information is right down there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.